I would uh, first like to, to welcome here. I think I'm very, uh, very glad the, that, that you made it to, uh, to Liechtenstein and, um, and to see also a bit of, of our country, which is, and we, we are lucky because we have very nice weather today. I'm a member of the ruling family in, in, in Liechtenstein, but I'm a private businessman. I don't have official functions, I have some functions because I'm a businessman here in certain professional organizations, but I don't have a political function. Mm -hmm. That's all my cousins who are ruling that. So I'm, a, I, I have, I'm in a lucky situation that I'm a private businessman. Mm -hmm. and I'm independent and enjoyed the life as an entrepreneur. So the first question I'd like to ask you is, uh, what do you believe is more deadly, SARS-CoV-2 virus or the response governments have had around the world to it? What is the bigger problem, the, the, the disease itself or the consequences of the, of the lockdown or of the measures of, of the government. We can't totally s separate it, but we have to be very careful what, what measures we do. And I think there are certain measures which totally make sense that, that we keep a bit distance, actually, which we should have in, 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 the, in the flu. But how much uh, sh uh, should you lock down uh, the economy? I believe in this first phase, we were certainly uh, too strict in locking down um, mostly, for instance, the retail shops, etc. Yeah, because you could prevent some deaths, but if, if, if you make life on Earth very uncomfortable, it, 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 it is true. Uh, the, the, uh, the impression was it was important that people don't die from COVID. Mm -hmm. It was less important what are the collateral damages. And I think this attitude was, uh, was dangerous because there, there were these collateral damages um, of the psychological problem, not as a medical uh, treatment, and also uh, the, the economy. And we know that uh, the, the better an economy runs, in general, also the health of the population improves. When the question is, is, is the response worse than the, uh, than the problem? Uh, this, this will be judged finally by the benefit of the hindsight. But at the moment, it seems to me that the response uh, might have created more problems than the uh, disease itself. I don't want to, uh, to attack anybody and I don't want to criticize because it was very difficult to decide what to do because it, it was a, a new thing. What in my opinion was wrong was to create panic. Panic is always a bad um, thing because uh, you will nearly inevitably take the wrong conclusions. Yeah. It is clear that we can't prevent all risks. Bad things can happen and can disturb our, 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 our systems. I was surprised by, by both, uh, actually by the way of the quick spread of the disease. I think the panic was unnecessary. Cautious, yes, but, pan but no panic. Yeah. And um, have have you ever experienced or witnessed such coordination of, of policies globally and, and under the UN today? There's a common thing we have to do something. The, the way it's done is different. I know that, uh, for instance, the World Health Organization said once it's a global problem and that needs a global solution. And I think this is, uh, this is a bit of a wrong approach. Uh, it, is, it, it has become now a global problem. But the solution to diseases you can only do locally because habits are different, people are different, the way economies, the way cultures are, are different. I'm, I'm a big friend of the decentralization because um, you can always take better decisions in, in, in smaller entities because it can be more, much better adapted to the, to, to the case. And it's also very human. It is also more accountable if, if you have it uh, decentralized. People un understand it better. 
and you should not try to adapt people to a system. You should adapt the system to the people. In the first lockdown, closing simply the borders didn't make much sense because, uh, for instance, in Germany there were very different problems in different areas. So I think this is done now better that one leaves the, the, the borders more, more open. And um, this, and to, to take even in the countries like Germany, which is a medium-sized country, to have a one-size-fits-all also doesn't work. Yeah. And you have to distinguish also between towns and rural areas, and situations in Bavaria are different than the situation in Hamburg. <laughs> And, and does the focus of the UN WHO uh, pandemic response policies, do you think they, do they appear to you be, to be more about controlling people or controlling a virus? It should be controlling the virus and the World Health Organization, I would see the role, which was also the original role, which was very good, to collect know-how, to bundle know-how, and that people can use it in the different, all the different member countries and yeah. can use it, this, this, this know-how. And I think this is, a, this is a very important function that there is something. But it should not be able to give orders what should be do. They could give certain suggestions, but, 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 but not orders. I think responsibility should stay and, 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 and should remain local. Now, what is the motivation? I can't really look into the, in, into the brains of, of, of the people who, who, who are doing that. But I think organizations generally believe that they are good at every, and a world should again adapt it to their, um, uh, to their feeling. And I think it's, uh, it's a certain bureaucratic centralization mentality which actually always happens when organizations get too big. So do you think the WHO has gotten too big? Or? Um, I believe quite a few of our international organizations have become too big. I don't know how big the, the WHO is but I'm, I, I think this organization normally gets too big. What are the prospects for human liberty and freedom going forward? after this year? From different ways, as well as politics, as a technology, we have um, a drive to overregulation. It starts with the, I'm not talking about the UN now because this is too complicated for me, <laughs> but let's start with the G20. The G20 now try to issue through OECD and other ones regulations which should be uh, which, which should have a global standard and then we have other supranational organizations who are doing that and who are trying to enforce it then we have national regulations which are also mushrooming and we have a regulatory network now which does not leave much room anymore for individualism and which starts also to, to get more and more standardized. And I'm very much a friend of innovation. I'm also a friend of digitization, but it's also very dangerous because with digitization, used by a national and international bureaucracy, you can more and more put people into categories, control their processes, regulate the, 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 the process, etc. Now, this, um, uh, this process is, is also running. Now, the, the pretext of a disease is a good pretext to even strengthen that. And from a purely virological way of things, this contract tracing with these apps makes sense. But I'm, I'm, I'm very afraid of that because you can control the person. And I don't know what uh, you happen. There is in Europe this data storage on, de on, uh, on telecommunications. When your telephone calls have to be stored by the provider for two years, and the authorities have access to that. They said, and the authorities have access to that. This was ruled by the European Court as against the European Charter of Human Rights. 
but it's still in force. And I'm a bit afraid that the, 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 the data of this contact tracing will also then be stored because it says we have to fight terrorism and we have to fight, you know, terrorism and we have to fight crimes. So we leave it to, uh, to get people more um, uh, secure. But uh, we are not protected against the misuse by governments of that. And this, uh, this makes me fear. And I don't think there will be a law coming, a force coming that will force you to have these apps. But it might be that, for instance, you can't take an aeroplane flight without having such a tracing app. I think it, it could be in influenced by that way that you more and more have, have to use it. And I'm, I might be too long now saying that, but I'm, I'm, I'm very worried of that. And if we look, we have this, Europe is very proud on their uh, general rules on data protection of individual data. But this protects us that, for instance, companies have our data, but it doesn't protect us against the data collection by the government. And this is enormous. Yeah. So as, as a result of the response to the pandemic, do you, do you see some sort of global governance emerging from this? I, 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 I don't think it's, it's, it's really emerging from that, but, but it can strengthen the way, I would say, to more government control and maybe also a little bit more to global, global rules, yes. But uh, I think this, um, I'm not too afraid about them because they are normally broken. So I, I don't think the global rules will last very long because politically we see, for instance, China works really on a very hard decoupling. Is, so Vince Michael, do you believe global centralization of political power is a good thing? No, no, I, I certainly uh, I don't think, um, because it doesn't leave any choice. I believe also in competition and also in competition of, 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 of power, etc. So I don't think a centralized global power. That they discuss, they should, should discuss globally, but a, uh, there shouldn't be a, a centralized power. And, and what happens when we do see centralization of power? Uh, well, I'm... I'm First, I don't believe it, it will t totally succeed, but it can uh, create also the way to that quite a lot of damages. But centralized power is per se bad because uh, we have never had a time in history where power was not misused. And if we have a centralized power, it's just one who can misuse it and, and you can't even, even, even leave it. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very much against the global centralized power. It, 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 it can go in, 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 into different directions and in, in, in different uh, ways. And I think, you know, um, central world government will, will never work. Uh, but the, the idea exists, there is a utopia there. A, part of a, benevol a benevolent sort of world government. I think quite a few like the idea of utopia and think it is their vocation to, 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 to create it. Whether in the deep of their mind they like the power or the utopia, I can't judge. <laughs> and they might not even know it themselves. Yeah. And is, in, is human dignity and freedom more preserved in small states like your own or very large states? So small, human, I would say small, small, small countries have the advantage that uh, governments and ruling is much closer to the people. So the accountability is much higher. But this can also be done in larger states with a, a large degree of centralization. That you can have decentralization, with a large degree of decentralization. That you can have uh, lots of things which are decided, let's say, on municipal, municipal level, and only which can't be decided on municipal level, you do then on provincial level and then on, on national level. So you, you can get to that. And with small countries like Liechtenstein, you have the advantage if somebody thinks that his freedom is limited, it's very easy to emigrate. Great, yeah. And um, are you concerned about the behavior of the media this year? Well, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. And I'm very concerned that there is very little plurality in there. There should be a plurality of opinion in media 
there's, uh, there's very little uh, plurality, as there's very little plurality in politics. And then there is very little criticism, criticism of media, of politics. And I think if media who, uh, who say that they are the force power in the, in, in the state would uh, take a role, they would also try, have to take a role of opposition. Looking at social media and online things, are we witnessing increasing trend towards control of thought exerted through private platforms such as Facebook and Google? You know, yes, uh, yes, I think we, we can fear that. Normally I'm not afraid of, of, of private platforms. I'm less afraid than, than of public ones. But the market power of, uh, for instance, of, of Facebook and Twitter and so on has become so big that they are nearly monopolists. And when they start with certain ethics committees, etc., it's a bit like a censorship. So I think it's very important that we get, got in, get in the social media area competition into it. And for me, it's also a, nearly a case for an antitrust yeah. uh, procedure to, uh, to, to, to break the, this, this power. I'm also against that the state has the, has the, the power to, to, to control that. So I think it would be better to uh, by competition. Social media has the advantage that everybody can express himself. And I think this is very important. The next question I have is, um, do you think that political oppression always comes from the state? Or can, can private interests corrupt, use the state to protect its operation? Well, I think uh, both, 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 both can happen. And, and, and we have uh, crony systems. and. It can be very uh, profitable for private businesses to, uh, to be close to the state, but it's, it's very dangerous because it also it um, distorts competition, it, distor it, it, it distorts markets, and uh, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be categoric ab about that. But uh, the, the state has one ad advantage: the uh, the state can. Uh, Enforce things, which private businesses can't. They, they can enforce that. They can. Inf the state can enforce it. Yeah. So uh, the power of the state is 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 is, is, is much bigger. But it, but it can also be misused in a corrupt system by private businesses. Yeah. But I couldn't say categorically. This is the bigger danger of, of this one. Sure. I just, see, I just feel like in this corona situation, the media is marketing this fear, and then the platforms, the, the general policies of WHO, yeah. but then, then, then the media platforms, the online media platforms, are sort of enforcing it privately. This, this is right, yeah. So it's a tricky situation. It's a very tricky situation, situation yeah. yeah. But for me, it's a crony situation. Yeah. So how, how does it? How, how, could you elaborate on that? Um, I think that the uh, crony situation is if there is a system where actually governments and specific businesses, not the whole economy business, but specific businesses, start working closer and closer to, 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 together, the business supporting the specific politics of, let's say, a specific um, political party or a specific uh, group of persons in, in, in politics, and therefore they get, they, they get certain privileges. And in certain uh, situations like with um, COVID, uh, you get, uh, and if you have a, lo a lockdown, this uh, businesses like Zoom, etc., have all of a sudden a very privileged position. This must not, uh, if it's short term, there's nothing wrong about it. But if it, it's getting established and it's more, bigger and bigger conglomerates in this style of, of, of communications, uh, we, we might get a problem. I think, and, and you just mentioned it, the economic of these measures. It actually favors probably larger businesses to the detriment of, of, of smaller ones. So it favors also uh, the disparity. And I think that anyway, a big problem of disparity mostly comes when there's a crony system. So 
Markets normally don't create disparity. It's, it's normally uh, um, a, a combination of business and government in the crony system which increases disparity. Yeah, and, and do you think we're seeing that in this case? I, I think we are, I'm afraid, I, I think we will see it in the case, as one of the results of, of COVID that we will have higher disparity in income and wealth in, in the world. And this was not created by markets. It will also not be, it cannot be healed by redistribution. It could only then be healed again by markets that we have less regulations and more competitions and more new businesses and more smaller businesses. Yeah, and just a, a small follow-up. So the, the, the bailout measures and the, these uh, stimulus of handing out money, I mean, they, do you think they could in any way correct the kind of problems the lockdown has brought? Uh, you know, if, if government locks, uh, locks down the economy, it, it makes sense to give certain money mostly to, this, uh, to the small and medium-sized businesses because they need it. If, because if, if, if you're closed down, you still have to pay your salaries, you have to pay your rent, etc. So that their government comes in, I mean, very much against government intervention, but there I, I see it sense. But this has also to work, will only work if it's done in a very decentralized way because the money has to arrive very quickly and not very bureaucratic. If we say, we are spending billions, and that will be over a stretch of three years. This, this doesn't help. And this will probably end in, um, in, the, wrong, in, in the wrong pockets. Yeah. In this, in this situation now, what can the average individual do to, uh, to reaffirm their freedom in, in well, such situations? For, for, for the average person, I think it is very important that people become aware of their responsibilities. And that becomes a, uh, a question of personal responsibility. People have the right to vote, and they should take this responsibility. And they should really look at the programs of the different uh, entities. And they should not try because they think it might be problematic, put themselves against new political movements because the old movements, and if I, we take Germany, the established parties, SPD, CDU, Greens, they have about the, all the same programs. So if uh, you, you can do, you, you, can, you, you don't have to vote against them, but you have to, to vote for, for, for the right people, and you must not marginalize people who are coming in with, with, with new ideas. I don't want to have radical populists, this is not necessary. But, but you should not, when somebody comes in with a new idea, define it as a populist. Yeah. And, um, I mean, coming from a thousand-year-old or more political family, uh, what lessons have, have you learned about uh, the way people appear in politics and their true motives? Uh, well, I think what, what one has to, uh, to know, that the world always changes. What doesn't really change is human behavior. So uh, we know one can never take anything for granted. One has always to take one's responsibility. One has to take a long view, try to be courageous, try to, uh, to, to be in the independent. Um, and, and to know there is nothing which is uh, secure. So uh, you have always to re-establish uh, yourself. And you know, the, the Lichtensteins as a family, we were over these years nearly totally expropriated a few times. We always came back. But I think it was a very important uh, way of education and understanding that everybody has responsibility for himself and should not, de uh, and, and should not really depend on other ones unless you, you have a grave disease or something we, we would help, but actually you're responsible for yourself. And are we dealing with more challenges to be independent through this, the events of this year? What do you mean? It is? Have the events of this year challenged the ability of people to be free and independent? It, it shouldn't challenge, because if, if that challenges this possibility, something would be very wrong, but also very wrong with, 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 the, with the people. So I, 
I think it, there is a danger, as we talked before, through technologies, through more regulations, for, for, for the freedom and, and self-responsibility. But actually, I don't think that, that we should say this crisis makes it much worse. It gives a pretext to, uh, to limit it. But it doesn't give an excuse for people that they don't use their possibility to take self-responsibility. So, do you feel that we can trust the UN as a, as a political body, or is it corrupt? I, I wouldn't trust any political party. <laughs> to, 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 to start with, I think we should rather trust in people. That's why I also like, uh, prefer, let's say, the British parliamentary system, where the constituencies, you elect a specific person mm, and not a political party. And this goes also for me for all organizations. Okay, so um, what would be your ideal outcome of the situation we find ourselves in this year? Well, I think that the ideal outcome would be that um, uh, people realize that um, big disruptions and negative disruptions can happen and, and we have uh, means to, to handle it. And I think that this, 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 this would be quite important and to say, okay, uh, and to take the lessons out of it and say, we, if we have the next issue, it might not be a pandemic, it can be, I don't know, a big global cyber breakdown or, or, or whatever, that we don't fall in panic. We have to keep a, 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 cool, a, a cool head and really to, to think what can we do. And I think we should then rely again more on local experiences and personal responsibility. Okay, great. And, uh, what would be the worst outcome? <laughs> uh, the, uh, for, for me, the worst outcome would be that we have a lot more control control of the individual and with the control limiting of personal freedom. And there's much more used, this word which governments already like, they say trust is good but control is better. A democracy can only function on mutual trust and not on control. Well, I think we, we talked about this self-responsibility. We talked the, the, that we know um, not to take anything for granted, that everything changes. You have to take a multi-generational view. Um, and I think if you have that in your, a bit in your DNA, in your family DNA, it is very helpful. And then you know that you have to take personal responsibilities.